All right, so um, this is a look at some of the new Mesh Fusion features uh, related to strips uh, for Moto 12.2. Uh, and this video is being made for the first alpha release, and I emphasize that because there are some known issues and a couple of little missing bits that uh, we will get sorted quickly. Um, the first one, and this is important, is that the new strips do not support a certain kind of strip intersection. And you see that right here. You can see that there's a problem. And it's the kind of intersection that is formed when you have uh, a ridge meeting two valleys, so to speak. You have one convex uh, strip and two concave strips meeting like this. Um, that doesn't work properly and, and will probably crash if you try to manipulate this model. The way to avoid that, if you do want to start experimenting with these new strip features and properties, is just to uh, build your model using only uh, subtractions, uh, subtractions or intersections, and no uh, unions, because uh, you can only get to this kind of intersection when unions are involved. All right, with that out of the way, um, let's look at some of these new features. So uh, I'm going to create a new fusion item using this blobby cylinder here. And uh, everything's the same here. I'm going to set the uh, width to uh, 40 millimeters. Um, there are additional strip widths that go along with these new strip features, but uh, we are just going to make those dependent upon the value entered here, uh, a fraction of that value. Uh, proportional to that value and uh, right now while I'm making this video that's not working but I I believe that will be in place that uh, deriving a deriving those other widths from this width will be in place in this first alpha anyway uh, new fusion item and I'm going to subtract these two uh, meshes from that fusion item regular old whoops must have missed that one regular old subtractions and uh, here we have our new fusion item with this new, these new strips and the features that go with them. So if we look at the fusion item, we'll see that uh, here, for example, are strip rows, which have always been uh, part of a, a fusion strip. But we also have uh, strip skirt rows and skirt outer rows. And those are the additional rows that lie on the uh, surfaces of the source meshes that provide uh, for corner rounding and other sorts of uh, post-fusion modeling uh, or procedural modeling of the fusion item. Um, just for clarity here, I'm going to uh, hide these source meshes so we can just get a clean look at these strips. So right now, uh, skirt rows is zero. If I start adding rows, you'll see additional rows uh, outside of the strip proper, if, if you will. And you can see we also have this uh, skirt outer rows, which uh, are intended to give you control over how many of these skirt, uh, these skirt rows uh, run parallel, that is, have constant width along their entire length, which, as you can imagine, can be important for certain modeling applications. At the moment I'm creating this video, uh, this has no effect. Uh, neither this uh, specification of the number of those parallel outer rows consistent with outer rows, uh, nor their width as specified down below here. Uh, but that's, that's the intent. So um, in any case, we do have uh, the uh, strip width absolute down here, as we've always had. And now we have the skirt width absolute. And, and while all of this does work with the old uh, relative strip width mode, uh, it's just as highly recommended uh, when using this feature, along with many of the other advanced uh, fusion strip features that you work with the uh, absolute strip uh, widths option on. In fact, you may have noticed when I created the fusion item, that option was on. Um, in any case, uh, let's uh, go ahead and adjust that uh, outer width, uh, or I should say the skirt width. And I'll do that with a channel hauling here. And you can see, 
Um, see, getting wider there. One of the uh, main things that these uh, skirt rows provide for us is a better control or better uh, topology when doing uh, corner rounding. And uh, we can do that here on, uh, on these strips on the global level. We're doing everything here just in the fusion item. We don't have any strip items yet. And uh, we'll look at strip items in a second because that's, that's where you really get uh, the most local control over all of this. But uh, just to give you a sense of what happens with, uh, with corner rounding, I'm going to turn this uh, corner rounding value up to 10. And you can see our corners here have become, indeed, become rounded. And go ahead and play with that a little bit. And this is where that uh, those parallel rows will also come into play. Uh, they will give you, you can see where this row is getting wider as it goes around the corner. Once we have the, uh, the outer rows, the parallel outer rows working, that will be a uh, nice and uh, consistent width as it goes around these corners. So just like we've had with uh, all along with uh, strips, fusion strips in general, there are certain settings up here in the global uh, strip settings section that are indeed global. Uh, the number of uh, strip rows as well as these skirt rows and outer rows uh, are global. Uh, they can't be changed on the per strip, uh, uh, per strip item level once we create strip items. Um, same thing with whether or not you're in absolute uh, width mode. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we get when we do uh, create strip items. All right, so now we have our strip items. And we can go ahead and uh, just uh, select one of those strip items, which brings up this uh, strip popover as usual. And I'm just going to pin that here so we have it handy. Um, but really, the, uh, most of the action is over here in the uh, strip item properties. So you'll notice that we have um, the, uh, the strip width, as always, strip profile. But as far as the skirt goes, we have this skirt width G and skirt width P. Uh, same with the outer width. And that's analogous to what we've always had with smoothing G and P. And that G and P uh, stands for green and purple. And uh, that works um, with this toggle borders button that you see here. When you turn that on, you'll notice that on either side of the strip, on either side of the uh, yellow-orange line of the uh, selected strip, we have a purple line and a green line. And those distinguish and differentiate between the two sides of that strip because uh, the skirts uh, have independent width. Once you have strip items, uh, you have independent width on either side of the skirt. So if I were to adjust the skirt width, skirt width G, in other words, the green uh, value, see that it gets wider on the green side. And P for purple. Naturally, we have control over uh, all of the corner rounding properties. Uh, much of that controlled best through uh, these controls here in the popover, but I, I'm going to save talking about that in detail until we have uh, full control over these uh, skirt rows and skirt outer rows. It'll make more sense then. But uh, before we go, uh, I wanted to uh, look a little bit at uh, some of the options we have for controlling all of these widths, because now we have these various widths, and uh, we certainly don't want to have to be uh, constantly individually controlling all of those properties. So there are some options there. I'm going to go here and go ahead here and select all the strips. And uh, we have this width hauling that's always been there, but it has some additional options uh, in addition to the options, uh, useful options that it's always had. Um, in its simplest form, if we just click on that button, we get uh, strip hauling for each of the strip items, but we're only hauling the strip width proper, not the uh, skirt widths. So we can adjust all of those simultaneously just by dragging outside of the uh, channel hall control there. But we also have the option 
by holding down uh, the control key to control the uh, both the widths and the skirt widths, uh, and, and you know that's a, that's an awful lot of uh, properties there. We don't even really want to look at all of them because the point of using this option would be if you wanted to adjust all of those things proportionately. And there's there's a somewhat probably little known feature of the uh, of channel hauling that allows you to control a bunch of selected properties and have them all be adjusted proportionally. The trick is the only way that works is uh, by holding down the control key. We hold we held it down to, to bring this up in this mode, but you also hold it down while dragging on one of the items, typically the top item in the uh, uh, channel hall control. So I'm going to hold down the control key, drag on this, and what's happening is all those values are being changed proportionally. So the relative width of the outer rows is uh, it's, it's remaining relative to the uh, to the width, the overall width of the strip when we hold down control and uh, drag on that top item. And I'm certain that uh, both of those options uh, will be uh, commonly used and, and useful uh, because I could, you know, there will be cases where you want the skirt particularly to be just uh, the same everywhere regardless of the width of your individual strips. Uh, I can see that happening where you know you want all of your skirts to be whatever 10 millimeters wide regardless of what's going on with the strip. On the other hand, this proportional control is you know it's it's the equivalent of scaling. Uh, so like if you're trying to adjust your entire model, you know you wanted all everything you know tighter as far as a, a strip widths, uh, adjusting everything proportionally would make sense. And I think those will be the two uh, most useful ways to uh, to adjust those properties. All right, well, that's going to be it for this one, and uh, we'll pick up on this as uh, these uh, last little uh, bits are implemented and resolved. All right, thanks.